steel town outside of Pittsburgh, in western Pennsylvania. And when I was growing up, 21% of the workforce was involved in manufacturing. Today it's nine. People want to know where the middle of America went. It went to Mexico and China, Malaysia, etc. How are we going to get those jobs back? People say they'll never come back. Look, I don't know if any of you are manufacturing. I've talked to a lot of manufacturers. I haven't found one who wanted to move their shop offshore. Not one. They would have loved to be able to stay here, but they couldn't. Why? Regulation, taxation, litigation. Those were the three reasons. People say, oh, it was low. Oh, you hear the media say, oh, it's because big business didn't want to pay labor rates. They'd be happy to pay labor rates if they could be profitable. It's not labor. As you all know, if you've ever been in a manufacturing plant, you know what you see a lot of? Machines, not people. It's still a lot of people, but you see a lot more machines and people having to run those machines. It's not people that's driving manufacturing. People cost driving manufacturers other than the regulation that government puts on with respect to hiring people. So look at the three things we can do. Taxation. What I've suggested is that we need to take the corporate tax rate, which is the second highest in the industrial world, and cut it from 35% to zero. Yeah. So if you're a manufacturer process in America and you set your employment up here, you will pay no corporate taxes. In addition, there's a problem. It's called Dodd-Frank, and it's called government uh, banking regulations under Obama. You cannot borrow money in America today. There are banks, you probably saw this, there are banks in New York who are actually charging depositors for their deposits because they have no place to invest the money because they can't because of the regulators. So what, so okay, we cut the corporate tax to zero. Where are they going to get the money to invest in new plant and equipment? Well, manufacturers over the past, I think now, let me see, seven or eight years, if you were a manufacturer in China and you made products there, you sold them, you made a profit, you paid taxes in China, and now you have profits, what does a company do with those profits? They sit there. Why? Because to bring them back under the current law, you have to pay a 35% tax after you've already paid tax in the other country. We are the only country in the world that does that. And so guess what happens? $1.2 trillion is sitting in countries all over the world. So let's do this. In combination with cutting the corporate tax to zero for manufacturers, let's say to manufacturers, you bring that money back, we'll charge you five, not 35, if you invest that money in plant and equipment. Now we've got it, the, the, the profit margin and the capital to rebuild American manufacturing in this country. Yeah. on top of that regulatory reform and I can go down a lot from EPA to NLRB I was in Charleston two days ago Charleston South Carolina and Hilda Solis does this article in the Charleston paper talking about how manufacturing is coming back and bragged about the fact that in Charleston there's a 4.3 percent increase with almost a thousand new jobs she didn't mention that those thousand new jobs were at a Boeing plant in Charleston that just started in June, that they are trying to shut down. <laughs> Why? Because they moved from a union state to a non-union state. You would think they would just be happy with any job created in America, but no. Why? Power. Goes back. Power. And